Hello everyone and welcome to this next LM simulation video here on YouTube. So today, um, back in Train Sim 2022, uh, we are going to be looking at the first in my How To series. Now this is a brief train series that I'm going to be doing. Um, this is going to be a long term train series uh, that's going to be looking into how to do certain things uh, in certain games. Um, aside from just the normal uh, scenarios and, and gameplay uh, that you can normally do. Um, so this will be focusing purely on Train Sim um, for Train Sim 2022 and uh, Train Sim World 2 as well. Uh, and in this video, the first of my How To series, uh, which is brand new for 2022, um, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, make a basic scenario uh, in Train Simulator 2022, which is what we're in at the moment. Um, so essentially, um, a few bit of the basics of how to uh, put together a scenario, name it, put it where you want to go um, and get it ready for distribution basically, uh, if you do want to distribute it or anything like that. So this is only going to be a basic thing, um, this will not show you how to do the full scenario, this is just going to tell you how to get started, um, so this is going to be a quick little video to show you how to do that. Um, so the first things first, get yourself into Train Sim 2021, whether that be 32-bit or 64-bit, that's up to you, I like using the 64-bit version. Uh, gives you a bit more flexibility and control um, and then you'll soon notice um, that you need to obviously choose what you want to simulate so um, some people choose services you know purely fictional or whatever I try and um, I'm, a, I'm a realistic scenario producer so I try and produce this as, as much sort of reliable and uh, uh, and good content you know sort of um, realistic content as I can um, trying to put things together um, so the first things first that I'll do is I will load up Real Time Trains, which is a, uh, a website where you can uh, you can get real time timetables for uh, trains uh, that are di departing from a certain station, um, and I will um, sort of work get working and I will simulate that in the game as if it was uh, as if it was happening in real life. Um, sometimes these workings may not occur, or maybe it's uh, it's a very rare working that you want to simulate in the game. It's up to you and what add-ons you have um, as to whether you can put it together. So I have everything I need uh, to put together this scenario. Um, when it is finally finished, I will be uh, I, will, I will be editing this and <laughs> making it a little bit more realistic. But this is just the basics uh, for now on uh, how to make a scenario. So the chosen working I'm going to be doing is this one here. I'll load it the browser. Uh, so this is uh, Toton to Chaniston sidings. So this is not a far run. This is why I'm doing it for this. Uh, um, uh, for this video, um, it's simply a quick run between Toton and uh, Chaddiston. Total length for the scenario is 45 minutes, um, even though it probably doesn't take you that long between Toton and Chaddiston. It does involve um, reversing into Stapleford and Sandy Acre, which is some sidings a little bit north of Toton, um, and then heading south um, along uh, Long Eaton Town crossings and Trent East Junction over to Sheep Stalls, Long Eaton, Swandon, and into Derby into the Chaddiston sidings. Um, so the reason I've decided to, to, to do this scenario is because I found a video online, uh, more of a photo actually to be honest, uh, that someone published of a Class 67 working a freight train, pure freight train, um, nothing else, um, from Toton to Chaddiston. It was a one-off working, I believe ahead of some bank holiday engineering works that they needed some uh, wagons available uh, in Chaddiston to be able to base some engineering workings from there. Now Chaddiston sidings isn't it isn't a yard, a working yard as, as per like Toton. Um, it, it, Bilston Rail are based there and they do have wagons based there, but it's uh, not to the same extent. Um, so essentially, Chaddiston Sidings is an outstaving point for, for freight trains, and we're going to be uh, doing a scenario based upon this. Um, so once you've chosen what scenario you want to do, I get it up in real time trains, you'll be able to see what you want to do. Um, I always get the uh, I always get the train that you're simulating sort it out first and then work out AI from there. Um, so we're going to get away from the uh, browser now. So now we've chosen what we want to do. We're going to go in uh, to Train Simulator and we're going to go into the Build menu. So you've got Drive, Profile, Build, Academy, Dovetail Live and Store. We're going to go into the Build menu, uh, which will then show up all of your routes and everything that you have currently installed. I have a great many routes currently installed in the game, as you can see. Um, 
So we're going to be going over to, this is the root, so if you want to edit or clone a root. Publish is if you want to do stuff over to, um, uh, over to the Steam Workshop, not something I want to be doing at the moment. Um, this is going to be purely for uh, third party sharing if, if that ever does come. Uh, an example of a scenario I've made in the past, uh, the BB Trek um, on the Bed Bedford to Bletchley line. Um, that scenario is actually released actually. Um, but you've just got to go down in this scenario, these will give you all of your routes that you've currently got installed and just find the route that you want to be doing this on. So ours is just trains at the Midland Main Line. Um, so the Midland Main Line comprises of pretty much everything in the Midland Main Line. I've got every single extension that they've possibly made for this. Um, every single one that they've possibly done. So what we need to be doing is, you're going to click this button down here for new scenario. It's then going to load up this menu here. Uh, that will show you how to sort of put it all together. Um, so the first things first, you need to name your scenario. Now, most commonly, uh, you can name your scenario whatever you want to name it. For mine, I always put my sort of signature in there, which is LM Simulation, um, and then just the name of the scenario. So, I'm not too sure. Skip freight. Let's just call this for. Uh, lack of a better way <laughs> of calling it. I'll probably call it something a little bit different. Uh, anyway, you've just got to decide where you want the start location to be. Um, so on this one I'm going to be choosing us to start at uh, Totem, which is here, uh, because that's where the scenario starts, that's where the train that we're simulating starts. And what do you want it to be? Do you want it to be quick drive, career, timetable or standard or a free roam? Um, ours is going to be a standard scenario, I don't want it timed or anything like that, so I don't want a career. Ours is just going to be a standard, bog standard scenario. Uh, right, and then you click create. Now what the game is going to do is it's going to load up the edit version of, of uh, Just Trains' this Midland Mainline, and then you'll be able to um, essentially go from there and be able to, to edit things. Now, I used to have to uh, pause the video here to skip it, because it used to take ages to load the, the game from this point. But now I've got it on an SSD, um, I don't need to worry that much, it actually loads very quickly, as you'll see. Um, probably takes about 20-25 seconds, um, which is quite good, it used to take about 60 seconds, but uh, now I've managed to halve that using this SSD. Um, the only reason it will take a while is because I've got so much content um, that, you know, trains and stuff like that to put into these scenarios, so that's the only reason it's taken a while, and also because it's a big route. Anyway, here we go. So this is uh, the edit version of the game. So this is not probably what you'll normally see on my uh, on my channel. You'll see the normal version. Uh, this is the editing version of the game. These are scenario markers, essentially, that will show up um, in, in the editing version. Um, anything like AI and AT and all of AI, wherever it says AI and stuff like that, uh, that's been put in by the developers of the root. Uh, it's nothing to do with me. Uh, you'll have your menu here on the right hand side. Now this is an important menu because this will determine uh, all the details of your route. So we've got the route name, uh, sorry, the scenario name. Uh, now you just need to put the description. So for the description uh, is going to be what's, what is shown in the menu. So you've got the scenario name and then you have a dis brief description of what that scenario does. So take this class 67 in DB colours on a one off freight we'll call it engineers I think is a better way to put it run from Toton to Shabiston that's pretty simple uh, and I've all already made a spelling mistake always double check with these because these are going to go live there we go and then your briefing is what's going to be shown on the left hand menu here um, when you start the thing on the F1 menu. Uh, that's what's going to be shown in the briefing. So, um, for all of my scenarios, I don't really do much with the briefing. You can do a hell of a lot with it if you had a lot more time, but I, I'm a little bit more time constrained because I work full time. Uh, <laughs> so when I do these scenarios, I try and get them done as quickly as I can, um, just so then I've got time to test them. And testing is obviously the way you find faults, and obviously it can take a while from there. So. Uh, please follow the on-screen instructions, it's essentially what I put in all of my stuff. Maybe that will change instructions, there you go. Maybe that will change in the future, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, so here you've got your author, so that's going to be LM Simulation, which is who you're watching right now. I, 
I cannot spell today. I seriously cannot spell today. Um, LM simulation. This is your start location. I'll just put this as Toten. I don't know why it asks you for that. This is the date that will show on the uh, on the screen. Um, so we're going to just make this random date, eighth of the third, twenty twenty two. Uh, this is how many stars, which is how difficult the uh, this scenario is, um, on a rating of one to five. Um, I'm just going to put this as a two. Um, it's a little bit more difficult because you're driving a freight, um, but there's nothing really difficult about it. Uh, 45 minutes is how long the scenario is. That is the scenario duration. Uh, the start time is essentially what time you need the scenario to start. Um, so this is essentially where you can then uh, go back and bring back the uh, the browser. Um, so our train starts at 16.43 um, and then uh, goes on 16.46, 16.51. So I'm going to set our start time as exactly that, 16.43. can vary depending on um, whether you want to add some more time for, for the player to get the train set up. Uh, this is the sort of weather menu. Uh, so for all intents and purposes you can make your weather into anything that you want. Uh, now if you want to use the AP weather pack, as you can see the AP weather isn't showing in this, um, you can go and, and launch the AP weather from here. So uh, for all intents and purposes, I will show you uh, just just a, a basic way of doing it. Um, but actually, to be honest, because a lot of people will be using the AP Sky and weather, weather Pack, I'll show you quickly how to do that. So just uh, when you get down to the weather menu, just click off of the uh, of the thing. Just click anywhere in the in in the area, and that will get this to go away. And then you go into this menu here. You'll need to click this little box with the uh, with the with the arrow on the right and then it will bring up another menu uh, and in here you'll just need to scroll down to AP um, and then scroll down to the bottom and you've got weather EP just click this middle one in there that will load it into the game click off um, and then essentially what you need to do is then reload this menu uh, <laughs> when I first started doing scenarios I couldn't remember how to do that just double click on this and it will come back um, but bear in mind one thing I will bear in mind is um, when scenarios are created in the same location multiple times, um, it will uh, overlay them. So these are essentially, they're just little markers, uh, but these markers, there will be one or two or three or four of them, depending how many scenarios are already in that location already. And if you double click on this wrongly, um, it can take you over to another scenario by mistake, and then, then you are in a bit of a mess. So as long as this is your first scenario, that should be fine. Make sure you are clicking the correct one. That's all. It's very difficult to tell. Um, so for this first time, I've made a scenario based at Toten, so no issue there. So now if we go down to the weather menu, you'll see uh, we've actually got some options for AP. AP, AP, as you can see here. Um, so we're going to be doing, well, what do we want? It's going to be sort of March time. Um, so let's have, I don't know. Uh, let's have... Clear to fog light. Uh, that sounds like an interesting one, and it's going to be spring. Um, now you can change the scenario settings a little bit and go into the advanced menu here. I'm not going to be doing that today um, because I'll actually be honest and say, guys, I have no idea what this does. <laughs> I've I've tried. It's extended weather. I think this this requires a little bit more, um, a little bit more fine tuning. I, I don't know how to do that, so <laughs> we'll just leave it on that. These are buttons at the bottom here, so this tells you um, what class of locomotive you're going to be driving. I don't bother with this, to be honest. Um, it just depends, especially when you're hauling freight. If you set it to diesel, your timings can get a bit screwed because it won't realise how heavy your train actually is um, and, until, until it all goes wrong. Um, so you can force simple controls, you can force expert controls, you can force a cab camera you can also do a rolling start now this is for the more advanced people we're going to leave out all of that for now um, I don't even know how to do a rolling start <laughs> and I've been doing these scenarios for years um, so there's even more to learn there and this game's been out for many many years anyway so that is basically how you set up the scenario now we're actually going to be getting the scenario underway so uh, let's have a look where we are um, if you don't know where you are a very simple way of, of knowing where you are is by just getting a random train um, plonking it there, this is just a, a random northern bell, class 47, a uh, very poor one, uh, nice colouring but, but, but yeah, quite bad texturing. Um, this is a Kuju one, um, and then if you just go into this sort of top menu here where you've got the compass and everything in there and you click this button here, this is your 2D map. 
Now as you can see, I can see this little blue symbol here is where I've placed this train. So I can see that we're currently whap, right in the middle of Toton. Um, now this train goes into Stapleford and Sandyacre. Now Stapleford and Sandyacre are these sidings over here towards the north of Toton. Um, a little bit of an interesting one is it, it reverses in Stapleford and Sandyacre um, and then sort of comes round. So by the sounds of it um, and by the sounds of, 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 of everything, um, oh I'll, I'll get the browser to go away now, sorry. <laughs> um, by the sounds of it, um, essentially this train will be starting in Toton. It's very difficult to know because obviously you've got to know exactly what this, this, this train does. But the sounds of it to me, it will start in these sidings over here it will come forward and then it will reverse into these sidings here and come through. Um, now because there's not many um, there's not many signals around that way I'm going to sort of make my own uh, assumption on this and we're going to start off in these sidings here uh, we're going to come forward to the um, Mapperley Good Goods Branch uh, where we're going to reverse uh, essentially change ends and then we're going to go from there. Um, that will mean that we'll have to be um, we're not going to run around the train because that's where it gets really complicated. So essentially, probably the best thing to do is to have it top and tailed. Um, although I know that's not most realistic. So I'm just trying to have a think of the best way to do this. Maybe we'll just start it in the Mapley Goods branch and uh, and go from there. Uh, we've got plenty of time anyway. Um, anyway, so if uh, if you want to know where things are, just press the F6 button, uh, and that will load up all of. Uh, wow. That will load up all of the sidings and the names of everything here. Um, so if you want to go for where that Mapley Goods branch is, if you just sort of zoom forward, you will eventually find it. Here it is. Um, so if I press the F6 button off, now we've got to find the controlling signal for this branch. Uh, it's not this one here. This is controlling this line here. I think it must be quite a way. Are we even sure where the controlling signal is for this branch? That is interesting. Ah, very interesting indeed. Right, so where is this line going? Oh, that's just a siding. Yeah, so you've got to sort of work out where you want to place your place your stuff. Um, so for me, I'm going to, to shove us sort of about here. This is where the front of the Class 67 is going to be. Uh, roughly about here, which seems about right. Um, so first things first is you need to load up the 67s. Um, so it will load up pretty much a basic amount of stuff in, in the uh, in the game, um, but you want to sort of get exactly what you want. So first things first, press this little object set filter again, um, and then essentially just click down on the arrow and see what you want to find. So the first thing I always do is uh, I always get the item and then get the enhancement pack for the item and, uh, and tick that as well. Um, so we're looking for RSC, who are the developers, um, Rail Simulator Corporation, uh, or Rail Simulator Company, and then we're looking for the Class 67. Uh, now we've got a few packs here, I just click both of them, <laughs> in case one isn't the right one, uh, and then we'll go back up, all the way up, all the way up, and now we need to find the enhancement pack for that train. So C67 pack, there we go. Right, so now if we go back over to here, the 67s will have been loaded into the um, into the game. So just click this button here, um, and then just scroll down. As you can see, we've got some 67s here. Um, these are additional 67s. They're they're reskins that I've downloaded for the 67s in the past. As you can see, I've got all the HST stuff in here. Here we go. This is all the class 67 stuff. Now our one was worked with a DB Cargo class 67. Uh, it was worked in DB Red livery, uh, if I remember rightly, but in DB uh, DBS livery rather than DB Cargo, because it was back it was a while back. We're talking about 2014, 2015 here. Um, so essentially, uh, let's have a look. Because I'm not too good on on working from history, because I have to get everything bang on, and I'm not entirely sure if the colour scheme is back then, or maybe I am. I'm just trying to give myself a think. So it would have been East Midlands trains, because it, it's crucial as to what livery, as to the period of the scenario, because if you put a DBS one in now, it's not going to be realistic, because the trains aren't in DBS livery anymore, and all of the AI is going to be, you know, as new. So we're going to wind this train back, and we're going to do it as it was in 2014. So we want DBS colours, um, so if I go for a little bit dirt, 
W2. Now that's that's Keith Heller, 67018. Uh, it's a very rare one to see out on the main line, so we're not going to have that one. That's a bit more like it, 67013. Can't remember which one it was that did the exact one, but um, I'm going to say 013 will do. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, right, so that's our train. Um, obviously, we'll put some wagons behind it because it's a freight working. Uh, first things first, you want to get a driver put onto it. Um, so just got to this top menu here, um, and you've got various different options here. Uh, you can see for consist, all of this, add passengers, all of that. Uh, first things you want to do is add a driver. So click the driver button, and then click the train that you want to make the driver on, and, uh, and there you go. That's the driver in there. But the uh, thing that you'll notice is we want to head south, which is this way. Uh, you can tell on the compass because it will show there. Um, and this guy is heading north at the moment. So the first thing you want to do is switch him round. There you go. Lovely stuff. So now we're ready. Uh, we can put some wagons behind him. Uh, and I've also noticed I've put him on completely the wrong line, haven't I? He's meant to be on this one over here. Uh, no, I like that actually, he's got a signal to go from. Let's put him on this line here, he's got a signal to go from, I like that. Right, um, so what we'll do now is we need to find some wagons for him to go to. So we'll just do the same thing again, object set filter. And then this time, the wagons that I'm putting behind this train are developed by Armstrong Powerhouse. So just go to AP. Um, now we want to go down to uh, the JNA wagon pack, which are engineers wagons, and we'll click that button there. And then same thing again, have a look down here, and here we are, we've got all the JNAs J, J here. Now we're going to have these weathered and loaded, um, because obviously we want them to show a bit of sign of use and stuff like that. Um, so if you click them, it will load it in weathered and loaded. So what I do now is I, I click and I add, and I click and I add, and I click and I add. And then as soon as I've got about four in a row, uh, what I'll do then is I will separate the train like this which sounds a bit counterintuitive but hang on here uh, hold down the shift key um, if you want to make some more of these very quickly uh, and hover over one of the wagons while you're holding down the shift key select the wagon and it will select the whole consist uh, what you're doing now is you can click this copy button just like that and then just like you're in Microsoft Word click the paste button and you've got another set of wagons here, how magic is that? So now, if we go to the rear end of this train, we can add a new load of JNAs. Um, and then if we go a little bit further, we might be able to add some more, although we have a very limited amount of JNAs we can add on this. Um, so weathered and loaded, weathered and loaded, weathered and loaded, weathered and loaded. And there we go, I don't think you can fit many more on. Um, so for the purpose of that scenario, that is going to be our consist uh, for today. I may be able to actually fit one more on. Am I just biting off more than I can chew here? Yeah, yeah. seems to be alright actually, to be honest. We're in front of the signal still. Uh, right, okay, lovely. So that's fine. That's our, uh, that's our train all set up, ready to go. So... Uh, <laughs> We're not quite ready to get the scenario started yet because I haven't given him any instructions. So what you need to do now is you've got the train set up, you've got the wagon set up. Um, we don't need a tail light, do we? Oh yes, we do. Uh, some of these uh, they'll put a tail light on it automatically, uh, but other ones you'll actually have to go to the rear and add a, an actual tail light version. So I'm just going to delete that rear one um, and put in a tail light version. Make sure that he's got the tail light. No, he hasn't. So we need to swap him round. There we go, there's the tail light. Lovely, so that is now ready to go, ready to rumble. And he's connected at his end. So, now you've got your train completely set up, finally. This is all good. Um, you can add passengers and whatnot to your scenarios. If you go to the, um, uh, if you go to this sort of people, animals, figures part, you can actually get a male, male standing, uh, I think number 11. Yeah, usually a guy like this. You just have him standing there. I don't know, just as a bit of, uh, just as a bit of sort of, I don't know, someone out there in real life. Um, now if his shoes are a little bit too sunken into the ground, like this one, um, you can edit him. So just like I did there, I was rotating him, you've got all of these axes that you can change. If you just highlight the figure, you can rotate him, you can tilt him forwards, backwards, do whatever you want. We want to um, bring him out of the ground. So if you actually go to this button here, the movement button, 
and click the Y axis, you can actually move him a little bit out of the ground. You can put him up there, you can move him down here. We just want him absolutely perfect, which is about there, I'd say. Lovely. Um, and now he's all set up. We've got a nice little bit of uh, a nice little man here as well with our class 67. Uh, we now need to set up the train itself. Um, so it's 1643. So I'm going to go into this menu here. If you double click on the uh, on the driver icon that you put on earlier, uh, it will come up with a new menu on the right hand side. Now you need to call this train whatever it is. Now you can call it player train. You can call it whatever you want. For me, I always call it the working that you're simulating. Um, so for this um, precise thing, we're going to be working uh, six Zulu three three, um, and the precise working is going to be. Let's go back into real time trains. The sixteen forty three Toten TMD to Chadderston sidings. There we go, lovely. So you just copy and paste into uh, into the game. So now you've got your name set up. That's your name. Uh, you've got a few settings here, player consist and unloaded at start. Now unloaded at start I tend to ignore because that doesn't really work. Uh, it's quite unreliable. Um, even if you put unloaded at start you can find that your train has people in it. Unloaded at start is only for passenger scenarios, not for freight scenarios as far as I can tell. Um, freight scenarios you can put your own stuff in and if you need to adjust whether there's freight in there or not you can just highlight the wagons and do it a different way. Uh, but we've got fully loaded wagons which are selected as fully loaded, so that should be fine. The only thing we need to worry about is this. Now, player consist. Now, if you do not tick this button, the train will drive itself to Chadderston Sidings without you. <laughs> You'll just stay here and it will just drive off. <laughs> um, that's because you haven't ticked it as a player consist. So make sure you click that button and that becomes your train now, essentially. Um, so the next thing that I do is uh, I select a destination. Where are we going? Where is this train being routed to? So if you click the destination button um, and then load up the 2D map again and just sort of zoom out, this is where we are now, Totem. Now if you know the route off by hand uh, and the diagrams, you'll know exactly where you're going. Uh, this here is East Midlands Parkway and Ratcliffe Power Station. Um, so we want to head up this way, uh, all the way this way to here, which is Chadderston Sidings. Here we go. Um, so we want to, where are we going to be taking our train? Let's take us into number 9, I think that's a good Chadderston siding to go into. Number 9. There we go. Um, and now if I go back um, and I just need to set the, yeah the last thing I need to do, sorry, is set the service class. Um, so this determines what priority the train is going to get. So for my train, um, if, if you set it as a uh, as, as a freight service it's going to be routed into every freight loop there is on the route uh, that's because that's how freight services are determined um, because there are no freight loops on this service I want to see what it's going to do so I'm going to set it as a standard freight which is what it is it's a class 6 maximum 60 miles an hour standard freight um, and essentially I'm going to click off um, and now we should have our routing so the next thing you need to do is go into this menu here next to the toolbox one two three you'll find the timetable view. Now if you click this timetable view, uh, what it's going to show you is exactly how it's routed your train. Um, so if I go back now and uh, go over to Totem, which is where we are here, uh, we're currently in this siding here, which hasn't got a name, um, and it looks like it's going to take us, this red line is essentially where it's routing us. So our routing is going to be through Toten sidings is actually going to take us through this bypass line, the San Diego arrival line, and then we're going to go through the North Yard siding, and then we're going to go out the other end to the down reception. Um, pretty much by the time we do that, yeah, 1725, that sounded pretty much dead on. What did it say in, re in real time trains? It said that we were going to be in Chadderton sidings for 1730. So there you go, actually, we're doing quite well. Uh, so then we're going to follow this slow line, slow line, slow line. Um, and then we're going to head south. Now the thing that you'll notice immediately is it's running you wrong line. Now that's because it doesn't realise uh, that that uh, that there is a right way to do it. Uh, it. As far as it can tell, it's doing the right thing. Now this is a bi-directional line, so there's no issue in doing this in real life, but I like to be extra realistic, so what I'm going to be doing in this scenario is I'm going to be ensuring we go via the up ear wash line, not the down ear wash line. 
I want to put some AI in this in this uh, scenario, and I want to make us so that we're held a little bit of uh, you know this, that, and another. This might work, it might not. It depends on the style of the route. Sometimes it doesn't like uh, how you're routing it. Um, trial and error is basically how it works, really. Um, anyway, so the first thing we're going to be doing is I don't want us to stop here, or I don't want anyone to see that I'm trying to route us this way. I just want the scenario to route us this way. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding this thing called a waypoint. So if you click this button here, little flag button here, um, and it will add it onto your list. It doesn't know what you want to do at the moment. So if I click at waypoint, um, it will come up with now where do you want the waypoint to be. So if I have a look, Long Eaton up ear wash. This is in uh, alphabetic sort of order. So we want to go down to L. Long Eaton down ear wash. Long Eaton up ear wash. Now if I press this button here. There we go. Suddenly he's being routed via Long Eaton Up Ear Wash. Uh, I always press save just in case the game crashes. Um, after everything you do in this game, press save. This game is prone to crashing and I don't want you losing your scenario in case it does decide to throw its toys out of the pram. Um, so I always save as, as a force of habit. So now you can see it's routing us via the Up Ear Wash round to uh, Sheet Stores Junction on the correct line all the way through Long Eaton, all the way through to Spondon, all the way through to Derby and then what's it wanting us to do is then routing us into platform 5 and then we're crossing into Chatterston arrival line and into the siding. That seems fine to me to be honest but I want to make sure I want to go via the real time trains thing and do exactly what it wants us to do. Um, so essentially it wants us, we are due into Derby Platform 5, ironically, actually, um, which is interesting. Uh, what I will do then, if that's the case, I will put us into Platform 5. We are due to stop there for a few minutes, so that's what I'll do. Um, I'll actually create a stop order for us to stop in Platform 5, because according to the timetable, uh, which I'll show right now, just so that you've got a brief view, um, you can probably see here, uh, we are due to stop into Derby Platform 5 for two minutes. I know it's not long, and we're due to pass another train there. Um, but uh, essentially, that's what we're going to be doing. So, um, Derby Platform 5, what you want to do is hit this sort of guy pointing. You know, sort of a gun symbol, do you know what I mean? It's a stop at destinations instruction, essentially. You just want to put that in. Uh, make sure it's after where you want it to be. For example, if you're going to go to Long Eaton, and the stop instruction is before Long Eaton, make sure you put it in order by using these and the up and down arrows to put it in the, in the correct order. Anyway, so the stop and destination instruction, we want it to be Derby Platform 5. So as again, go down to D and find Derby Platform 5. So Derby Platform 5. There you go. Lovely. So we're due there, 1719, 1719. Now that's very optimistic given our load. Also very optimistic given um, this 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 service actually we're not due into Derby till 1722 so if I hit the uh, this little clock button here uh, timetabled it will now add it as a timetabled stop now you can add how long you want the train to be stopped there now given this train's going to be running a bit early I'm going to make it stop there till 1725 and 28 seconds so that gives us a six minute stop in Derby, which is generous, I'd say that's about right, while well, the signaller gets his ducks in order and puts us into the uh, Chatterston siding. There we go, now we're due into Chatterston at 17.33, which is, sounds a bit more realistic. Once again, click save. Um, so now what we're going to be doing is we're also going to add a stop order at this Chatterston pace here, Chatterston arrival departure to whilst the, or we simulate that the yard shunter at or the, the yard person at Chatterston sets the points for us. So we're going to do the same again, hit the stop at destinations instruction and find C. Right, Chatterston. So we want it arrival slash departure 2. Once again, hit the timetable button. How long do we want to be sat here for? How many minutes do you want to be sat here for? You can either do it by length of time or, or just generic how, how long you want to be sat there for. I'm going to say 2 minutes 30, sounds about right. There we go, and now we're due in at 17.36. Now the first thing that I always do once I've done that is I then add the final instruction. So our final instruction is going to be to just stop at Chatterston siding number 9. 
So then you do the same thing again, click it again, down to Chatterston siding number 9, which is this one here. Now click timetable view um, and then we're going to be adding, I don't know, a 4 minute 50 stop in Chatterston siding number 9. There you go. So now you've got pretty much a 45 minute timetable. Bear in mind that if you add anything before this, uh, it's going to show up as red, which means that uh, the, the timings have changed and you need to update them. Click save. Job done. Right, so now you can look into adding alternative services, um, whether that be uh, services that you want to add for, for any particular reason. Uh, it's totally up to you. Um, so for me, um, I'm just going to be wanting to... I might add a stop marker here, TCA54566. Depends how many trains have you passed this area. I can't imagine when there'll be too many. Um, but I might add a um, I might add a blocker here just so that you can have um, a little bit more reali realism. So in real life, not every signal you're gonna approach is green or red. Sometimes you are gonna be held because the signaler hasn't sorted out your route yet, or the ARS automatic route selector hasn't selected your route yet. Um, because it's leaving it up to the signaler. Sometimes there's going to be things like that. So uh, in this scenario, um, I'll show you a very brief introduction to blockers as well, um, just so that I can just introduce you into how to make it a little bit better for you. So now we're back here, matey boys here, with our wagons of JNAs, uh, and we're ready to depart to Chatterston. So the blocker that I want in this scenario is going to be to the south of uh, Toton. So we need to get to the south of Choton which is all the way back down here, past the Tesco uh, and just at this crossing here which is where we're going to be crossing over to here. Now let's have a look, where is the best place to put a blocker and where are we going to send him? So if I go back over here and uh, go into the number 9 view, if I select to put a blocker here just near this portal uh, and I tell him uh, to go down this way yeah, I think that should be all right. Yeah, lovely. So what I'm going to be doing is blockers are available via many means. A, uh, AP have done one. The one I always use is the Just Trains uh, blocker. Uh, it does quite a good job. Um, but sometimes you do need to put a stop instruction in in order for the um, for the train to realise um, that, that you have to stop there. Otherwise, it will mess up the timetable. So this will either work or it won't work, but it is a way to put a blocker in. Anyway, so. You're just going to be looking for the blocker that you need to add into the scenario. So mine is a just trains one, um, and then if it's part of the common library, so if you just go down to uh, common library, click that button there, uh, and then go in back into engines and tenders, which is what it is. It's under the J uh, description. I think it's uh, just trains. Let's have a look. Invisible engine. That's what it's called. It's not called a blocker. It's called an invisible engine. Uh, it's part of the common library CL. So here we go, this is an invisible engine, I know it says invisible wagon, don't, don't, <laughs> don't quote me on that. There we go, that's an invisible wagon. So now, just like you're setting up an AI service, you can uh, set up this invisible wagon to do whatever you want it to do. So let's add a driver onto it, um, and then I call this blocker, and then one, or two, or three, whatever, how many other blockers you're going to be using. Uh, I'm just going to call this blocker one for now because uh, it is the, the first blocker. Um, I don't care what it is, special, whatever, it doesn't really matter um, as long as it's going to be moving by the time you get there. So I'm going to set this to be moving at 52, 1652 and then that sets us a little bit behind but that sounds about right. I don't expect this train to be non-stop all the way through to Derby, I mean it's only a short distance and it's not high priority. Um, make sure you don't tick this as the player consist because, well, you shouldn't be driving it <laughs> a blocker train, uh, certainly not. Once again we're going to set the destination that we want this blocker to go to. So you go into your 2D map and I'm going to be setting this blocker to go to uh, Portal Trent South Up Slow which is just a little bit further. We're not going to be going down this line so it gets it completely out of the way of us and onto the Up Slow. Um, what do we want the Up Fast? Which one do we want him to be on? Uh, let's have a look, let's have a look. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, no, it doesn't really matter. So let's uh, put him onto the up slow here. Click on that, 
and then that links that sort of destination with that and then if we click off of it and then go back into the timetable view you'll now see that in your list you've also got a blocker um, and it's actually worked which I'm quite surprised at, uh, about sometimes it doesn't like it but um, yeah that's worked it's going to be taking that blocker down there it means that when we get to this signal it will be red and it will only go green once this train has passed TCA 4534 or it might or it might not go green <laughs> it just depends you might need to tab uh, you know what this game is like sometimes um, as you can see not really affected our service at all um, however I can never be too sure of that so what I do is I go into the first destination stop instruction I put and I click on it and then I reload the timetable nope there's no change at all so as you can see that has not impacted on that at all if I decided to change this blocker and make him 1659 for example and go back into our service as you can see they've all become red the reason for that is because by the time we get to here he's going to be stopping us from continuing which means that we are then going to be delayed something that everyone should know about um, now if you go into this is what I mean it's showing is red uh, the timings have changed so we need to reload the timings so if you go into stop uh, the stop instruction reload the timings you can now see look we're not due into 1721 now that's a little bit more realistic so what that is telling me that is that in real life the train will depart from the siding and then it will go through all the all this all the um uh, it will go through all of the yards and all of that and it will eventually get to this end and be faced with a red signal be uh, not because there's a blocker there in real life but because the signal hasn't set the route up yet or whatever so that's making it a little bit more realistic so we're going to be following that now we're not due into Derby until 17 uh, we're, we're not due out of Derby until 1725 but this is saying 1727 now because it's following the same amount of duration that we had before so I can just change this back to 1725 and 28 seconds now we've only got a four minute wait in Derby a lot easier um, and now as you can see all the timings have married back up again there's no red anywhere that's exactly what we want to see and exactly why um, I enjoy this. So now we've set that blocker up, we're going to set up the second and final blocker, which is going to be at Derby Station. So, how do you get from here to Derby? Well, you can do it one of two ways. You can either literally go there and follow the route all the way to Derby, although that can sometimes take some time. We're going to do uh, what's known as a fast travel. Uh, so, if you go up to your sort of magnifying glass and uh, everything up here, your compass you'll see a little button on the right hand side that says route markers now if you click on the route markers button all the route markers will come up for well not just this route but other routes as well by the looks of it um, these are all the routes here for just trains middle and main line these are all the markers that we've got now we want to go to Derby so just click on Derby there go back into this menu and click the play button and when you do this it's going to change us over to Derby as you'll be able to see very shortly once it's uh, loaded in the assets there we go there's a lot of assets to load in at Derby not a simple place to load in that's for sure all of these here are scenario markers for other scenarios that have been made based at Derby here and that's us loaded in welcome to Derby uh, so now you have a look here this is the south line platform number five which is where we're going to be coming in on um, so essentially you can now get rid of that um, and we need to set up our blocker which is going to be stopping um, our train from proceeding here at Derby uh, so what we want to do is we want to set up a blocker just outside of the station here about here so just get your invisible engine place it here and then put a driver on it this will make sure that the signal is red uh, if the signal is green and you've got a stop at destinations instruction um, and it's a freight train and it's a station um, sometimes the player might go through it because he might not realize he's meant to stop there this forces them to stop there also adds an aspect of realism so we'll add this now as uh, blocker number two Um, and then make sure that this is in a player service as well. At the start time for this blocker, we're going to make this 17:25 to marry up to the time that we're due out of the uh, out of that platform app. Uh, just be exactly the same destination. We're going to go back into here, and we don't want it to be Trent South because we're miles away from Trent South. We're now all the way over here in Derby, so we're going to set him as Derby North Line C. And then now, if we go into the timetable view, 
you'll now see that we have a second blocker that's now due to go between here and the top of Derby. Very, very simple, a very, very effective way of uh, sort of making the scenario a little bit more realistic. That's the that's the rule. Um, so now we set up that uh, that blocker. Um, there's nothing really else to do. I could create a third blocker uh, when we get into the siding, um, but instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a person and add an instruction into the scenario um, so that the people, uh, all the well, whoever's driving the scenario, is aware that when they get to this siding here, which is where they're going to be stopping, they need to let the yard shunter board. Um, so the yard shunter, we're just going to load this as the same bloke as before, this guy here, very nice gentleman. We're going to have him on this side of the train because that's where that's where they usually stand. Um, once again, we need to rotate him, so highlight him, hit the uh, rotation button, and using this marker, you can rotate him anyway. There we go, just have him there. That's good. Now. Once again, we need to because this signal is going to be a proceed aspect into the siding. We need the um, the person who's driving the train to uh, be aware that we need to stop here, and a stop marker sometimes isn't enough for people to do that. So I'm going to create a a command. So what a command is is essentially some text that loads up when you depart a certain point of the route. So if I go into timetable view and go back into our train here, Derby platform five, and if I click on the stop at destination instruction, you now have some more. Uh, boxes here for various different things. Um, so the thing that I'm worried about is the display message. First thing you want to do is click uh, you want it to be displayed which is exactly what you want uh, and we're going to have a message to, to be displayed as soon as we depart the RB platform 5 a message will pop up saying the following. Um, so hello driver please remember to stop at Shadderston ARR slash DEP2 so that the yard shunter can board at signal. And as I say, I like to make it realistic. The signal at the end of that is ECS543. Sorry, not ECS, EC543. There we go. Very simple now that he knows. Once he he gets to Chalison arrival or departure and he's sat there for a couple of minutes, Yard Shunter has now boarded. Please proceed to Chadderston siding nine and click save. So there you go, that's pretty much that sorted. The only thing that I'm going to be doing now, and the last thing that I'm going to be doing on this scenario, is adding a piece of AI. Now very simple, um, I'm going to be basing the AI here at Derby. You can base the AI where you start, but there isn't that much AI on this section through, uh, through here, and it can get a little bit complicated with this huge junction here. So uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be adding some AI at the end of our scenario. Now typically I'd do this at the start, but uh, we'll just do it backwards for now. Um, so the first thing that I do in order to um, uh, in order to find out how much AI we want to add onto this scenario is we'll go back into real time trains uh, and if I actually go to um, properties oh, oh no I don't want to go to properties I want to go to uh, where do I want to go interact right here we go so this will now let me have a look at this um, a little bit more thoroughly here so now I want to see what trains are going to be at Derby when we get there so what I do is I'll just click on Derby um, so this is how it was at the time oh my god Matlock trains are cancelled there was a cancelled ECS service some STP services to Reading a VSTP to Nottingham holy moly that is a bit of a yeah that's going to be a bit of a, a plum to uh, to mimic, I'll put it that way. We also had a, a 47 which I could put in running late. I would actually like to do that, uh, but we'll do that uh, once this scenario does get published. We'll do that at a later point. Um, anyway, so you need a train going to um, going to London, don't we? Or are there no trains in London? There are. 17:34. It's a little bit late for my liking. Uh, what time are we going to be coming through at 20? Okay, so there's a train due in from crew at 17.19 in East Midlands trains. 158, um, yeah, let's do it as a 158 then. Or we can make it a 156, it's up to you. They're normally 156s, so we'll do it as a 156, I think, and East Midlands trains 156. So if I leave that there, 
Uh, you'll now be able to see that this is a uh, East Business Trains 156. It was late, uh, didn't arrive till 41, but we will do it as if it was on time. So now let's get the browser away. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is get the 156 ready that you're going to be putting in. So that's uh, going over to AP, down to class 156 pack 01, load it in, and job done. Right, so now we've got that guy set there. Uh, we're now going to zoom over. Now, we don't want the 156 to be here. We want him to actually move into the station as if he was actually driving. So you don't get much space to do this on this route, unfortunately. Uh, the line to uh, North, Stafford, North Staffordshire Junction is, is not very long down here. Um, so we're just going to put him here, uh, essentially just beyond the, um, the portal. Now down here, I believe it goes back into two tracks. He will cross over after crossing North Staffordshire Junction from Utoxeter. He will cross over here and then head over to this line because this is the lines that he terminates on. If he stays on these lines, he'll end up going on the through lines, which he doesn't want to do. Um, so essentially, you go into your consist button here. So you've got uh, engines and tenders, rolling stock, and consist. Now consist, you can already see we've got some uh, 156s here. Now we want uh, East Midlands trains. So are we able to see if there's any East Midlands trains? Yep, East Midlands trains GSMR, two car. That'll do. There we go. Looking very nice indeed. There's an East Midlands Trains Class 156 for you. So this is a piece of AI. So what we'll do is we'll just drop him here. Uh, don't worry if the FPS goes down. That's just because it's, uh, it's having to worry about a lot of different things at this moment in time. Um, so the first thing you need to do is add a driver. Or make sure there's a driver in the right cab. There is. Yep, we're good. Lovely. Um, so we'll add a driver. Now with this driver, you want to call it exactly what it is in the uh, in the real life thing. So uh, as far as I can tell, let's go and have a look. What is this in the real life thing? Da 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 da. da. So this is two November six five from Crew to Derby. So if we just copy that piece of text, take it over to the game here, and paste it in there. Um, that essentially adds adds the name onto the consist. Do we want this to be a player consist? No, we don't want it to be unloaded because it's meant to have passengers in it. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting the destination. Uh, now this train uh, destinates, uh, terminates in platform number three at Derby. Platform number three, which is this one over here. Um, so if we set this one here, we'll have him a couple of minutes late. Uh, that's a little bit more realistic. So if we don't let him set off until 17.21, that sounds a bit better. Or 1720. Let's do 1720. That sounds like a good number to go for. He was a stopping passenger because he's a class two, so he's a stopping passenger train. Um, and then that's that. Um, I think you can you can select a little bit more if you go into the menu. For example, if you go into the timetable view um, and you have a look for him, this is him here. Uh, it takes a couple of minutes to pull into the platform. That's perfect. We can now change into Derby platform three, but a little bit more detail on that. Um, Derby one to five up or down, down platform three. There we go. Because he's only a, a two car, so it'll be a Derby one to five car platform three on the down line because he's heading down. Lovely job done. And that is as simple as that is. Now you've got your first AI service. So, you want to add some AI wagons into the game um, because you are obviously wanting to add some, some more detail to the, to the simulation. You want it to be a little bit more realistic. Um, so, a very simple way of doing this. Um, we don't have the exact wagons that uh, DC Rail uses, unfortunately. Um, I'm just trying to think of the next best thing. Uh, MJAs, potentially. Um, either way, let's have a look. Um, in the object set filter and see if we can find something that would suffice. I'm trying to think, Uvi potentially, they've done the uh, MJAs, let's have a look. Uvi, MJA wagon pack, let's have a look and see if any of them will suffice. Uh, box MJAs, green, black. See these are Freightliner ones, they wouldn't be very prototypical here. Um, have you got anything else? It could suffice potentially. Just depends. This is what you've got to do. You've got to keep looking for something that would uh, that would absolutely. IOAs, JNA Mendips, JNA Mendips. Oh, we've got a few IOAs. Network Rail Empty. 
Uh, yeah, I could see that, potentially. Yeah, let's go on. Let's get some IOAs in. I know that they're frequently used on the Cliff Hill Stud Farm runs. Um, but we should have some in here, just uh, just to keep this other train company. Um, now these sidings here um, are typically full of wagons normally, uh, stored by DC Rail and stuff like that. Uh, but because we've got engineering work, so we can put another another train in here. So that's what we're going to be doing. So uh, this is going to be a static train, not going to be moving at all. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to add some of these IOAs. And we're going to have them as loaded. Now these IOAs are point-to-point -point wagons. So essentially, they'll have this little arrow here, which means that they won't have buffers on one side, because they're part of a two set. So they, they're meant to meet in the middle. Uh, so essentially, you flip it round the other way, and then you get another loaded one, you meet it in the middle, and the arrows meet. And that is exactly what you want to do. And then we're just going to do the same as we did last time. In fact, I'm going to save the game, because uh, anything can happen at this point. And hold down the shift button, click copy, and paste. And then if you hold down the shift button, click copy and paste, hold down the shift button, click copy and paste, and suddenly you've got a siding full of wagons. Lovely. Now you'll notice um, that this little symbol will come up, uh, which is a warning, which basically tells you that there is a static consist clash in this service between your train and these wagons. Now that is nothing to worry about, that is simply telling the player that there are wagons that will be in place that may prevent you doing further movements when you get to that destination. Now we are simply going to be terminating in the siding next to this, um, so there is no issue here for us. Uh, that shouldn't be an issue at all. So if I go ahead and, uh, and add a couple more loaded ones, just so you need it around the other way. Loaded. And then we want to add a, uh, a train on top of this, don't we? Because it, uh, Obviously, there needs to be uh, some sort of locomotive here. So um, let's have a think. What would be on top of these typically? Let's do a class 60. I think that would be nicer. Maybe a DB class 60 just for the engineers. Um, so if we go over here, go down to uh, well, where's the class 60? Is it just trains? I think that's the ones that I tend to use. They're just trains ones. Have a little think. Just trains class 60. You can see here. And we also want to make sure we've got the AP version. Uh, there's a very nice AP version for Class 60 it's, uh, that I'd like to add in. Uh, so let's have a look now. Here we go. We've got these Class 60s here. We've got very lots of different ones. Switch on to safety. This is the Spirit of Tom Kendall, this one, 6007. We've got the Drax one, which, oh, that one looks very nice indeed. I like the Drax one. We've also got the EWS of the DV branding, this one here, 60076. Uh, you've also got DVC debranded. Uh, 60010 yeah so you've got quite a few um, we're going to have ours as uh, 6100 Midland Railway Butterley and I'm going to not have him attached onto the wagons as this he's been doing a bit of shunting uh, here um, we're also going to have the uh, some sort of bloke standing here if I can find someone a little bit TSA uh, let's have a look see if I can find someone a little bit a little bit better than, than who we had. Workman 00, there we go. There we go, he looks a lot more like he's meant to be here. And as you can see, his shoes have sort of been en engulfed in the in the bottom. So we're just gonna just take him up a little bit about there, that should do. And there we go. We've got our matey boy. Let's actually have a few of them actually just to make the scene a little bit better and then you can do that essentially as many times as you like so for example if you want to put another player train next to it as well you can do that you can add some more wagons for example if you want to put some I don't know HTAs in here or you want to add some some different wagons in here for example I don't know what would go well in here as well um, definitely not that <laughs> that's the uh, that's the Royal Train, that. Um, it'd be nice if someone repainted that, because the textures on that are really poor. Um, yeah, you could add some more JNAs, for example. If you wanted to add some more JNAs in here, you could add some empty JNAs. I've got to find something that looks uh, about right for the uh, uh, for the DC Rail side of things, which will be over here as well. Um, anyway, 
that is basically the principles of how to make this scenario. Um, now the first thing uh, that I'm going to be doing, the last thing that I'm going to show you, is probably the first thing that I should have shown you. Um, go back over to your player train here, always click save once you've done stuff like that. We just need a bit of text to come up when you start the train, so essentially something to tell you what to do. Uh, because I don't have anything in my briefing, my briefing is empty as you can uh, probably remember. So you want to be hitting this button here, which is called trigger instruction. Um, now as long as you do this, um, it will trigger an instruction whenever you set it to do it. And it will work through uh, these protocols one by one by one as you go through in chronological order. Um, so we're going to hit trigger instruction, uh, and then we don't want the instruction to trigger right at the end of the scenario, we want it to trigger it at the start. So if you just click this little, uh, this little box here and click the arrow key, you can move the priority up and up and up and up all the way to the top. Um, now if you click trigger instruction again you've got some uh, settings here. Now the first thing is is at what point or how long do you want the uh, the instruction to show for? Um, depends on how long you want it to be there. Um, so for mine I'm going to set it for 8 seconds sounds about right to me that sounds fine. You can have a uh, an event that gets that, that, ha that has happened you can uh, trigger the train to come to a stop, trigger wheel slip, you can do that, you know, do anything with these, it's, uh, it's, it's quite, a, quite a cool little tool, but I just use it to, to show some text. So in this, we're going to trigger a message, uh, and essentially the message today is going to be, good afternoon driver, today you are in charge of 6 Zulu 33 1643 Toten TMD to Chaddersman Sidings Engineers working ahead of the upcoming bank holiday and North Staffordshire Junction blockade. And that basically tells you everything you need to know. I can spell this evening. Unusual for this work, or unusually, you have DB's finest skip 67013 in charge today. Get the train set up and going. You may be held briefly along the route. And there we go. Uh, that is uh, as simple as you need it to be. Uh, you can't set up instructions to show at waypoints. Waypoints are simply uh, points that you go past, but you can set up instructions at uh, places that you're stopping at, for example I've done this, and you also want one for the end. So thank you driver, you are now free for a PMB and the wagons are in place ahead of the upcoming engineering Blockade. And there we go. So now you've got some AI static, AI moving, blockers, and a full scenario between Toten and Derby. So that is you completely done on this this dump. You can uh, you can expand it if you want, add some more AI, which is what I'm going to do in time. Make it a little bit more realistic, which is what I can do. Um, add some more thorough AI, which is probably what I'm going to do, um, and then go from there. I'm going to add a, a, a bit more of a delay, um, probably a little bit further down the line, just so that we can then arrive and see that um, uh, see that train uh, that train arrive, the uh, the London St Pancras train. Um, but apart from that, yeah, seems to be good. We're going to have a, a good scenario on our hands. So this uh, this scenario uh, may indeed go somewhere in the future, but you never know. Uh, but for now, that's been a, uh, a full introduction on how to make a scenario. I hope it hasn't been too long for you guys. Um, it's probably taken quite a while to get to this point. 
and it's probably been well over an hour that I've been recording now um, but it's been much fun and I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, being able to uh, showcase how to build a scenario with you. Um, so little introduction on how to make a scenario an hour in and we're pretty much complete there uh, just to show how easy it can be. So uh, the only thing you need to do now uh, is click play um, and the scenario will play as per your wishes. So wonderful news that is how easy as it is. If you've got any queries or anything just let me know in the uh, in the comments I'll be more than happy to go over stuff again uh, but in the meantime it's been a very fun video to make and I look forward to many more of these uh, how-to videos here on LM Simulation but until next time uh, I've been LM thank you for watching this wonderful video and I'll see you in the next one. All the best, take care and ta -ra.